Hey everyone, welcome to part two of our solid body guitar project. In this video we're going to review the cam configuration and discuss ways of customizing for your individual tooling and machine parameters. Picking up where Jeff left off, we'll switch to the cam workspace. In this workspace we can see that I've already set up operations for the front side and back side, as well as work holding and electronics cover. Let's start with the back side. I'll edit that. And we can see that the model I've selected for this setup is the guitar body itself. I've picked a Z edge as reference, and you can see that the Z arrow is pointing up. X and Y are in the back left-hand corner of the piece as viewed from the front of the machine, with X and Y increasing in value from the origin. So this is a pretty typical top of the workpiece, top of the stock setup. We can look here and see the different operations. We have a face, a pocket, we're gonna do some drilling. And you can see those are just slight drills to mark where the hole should go. And then we have a spiral, which uh, is gonna be a 3D operation. Starting with the face operation, you can see here that instead of a face mill, we're using a flat end mill, quarter inch which is not the optimal tool for speed, but this is one tool that lets us do pretty much all the geometry using just the one tool and minimizing tool changes. You can see here, whenever you select a tool, even if it's the one you're currently on, you need to reprogram the spindle speed and uh, cutting feed rate, uh, as well as the other feed rates. That's kind of an attribute of Fusion's cam workspace in that it doesn't really know what we're machining and so I think it kind of has a default assumption of steel, which can have some pretty wacky feed rates from a woodworking perspective. The step over, we see here we have a value here that's just a bit less than the cutting diameter with the machining time right now of uh, five minutes. We can kind of see the impact that would have if we looked at a finer step over, which would be less likely to splinter and just provide a smoother surface, go down to like, 0.2 and now we can check the machining time and see we've pretty much added a minute to that so it's kind of the compromise you're making is a better finish and longer machining times moving on to the 2d pocket you can tell by the toolpath preview that we've got some problems with the pocket in this case it looks like the way it's trying to enter is going to hit our stock and helix that's a pretty common problem so i'll change that to plunge especially since we're doing fur, which is not particularly hard wood, uh, that, that will be fine and that will give Cam the clearance it needs. And now we can see that the toolpath is blue, which indicates uh, it's cutting and there's no problems. For the drilling operation, there's not too much to say here. It's gonna take on the diameter of the cutting tool you use, of course. Let's talk about more spiral in the simulate context. I think it'll be a bit more clear. So I'll select the setup container simulate and I'm turning off the body and I'm going to turn on the stock and you're going to want to change the defaults it's pretty hard to see what's going on here so change it to material colorization and the material ceramic is one of the better higher contrast choices I think I like to turn off the toolpath preview of course all of this is up to you and your preferences uh, this to me gives me a better view of what will happen on the machine and that's primarily all I want out of uh, the toolpath preview. And so we can see we're doing the face operation. This is going to look pretty much identical to what happens when we actually record the machine operations on the real thing. I'm going to speed this up so we can get through this. We kind of get what's going on. We're doing the 2D pocket now for the electronics cavity. And we can see as we get to the bottom, we leave these big ridges. And that's why I have this more spiral here, this 3D operation. My thought is the components will fit more flush and better if we have a nice smooth surface in that cavity. So that's all why that's there. Uh, we could get away with a lot less, but since I'm doing these as a small number of bodies, uh, the extra machining time is not a severe penalty. So switching to the front side, we can see that we've got quite a bit more going on here. And that's of course due to the contour top. First, I'm gonna lead with an adaptive clearing and that's gonna remove the vast majority of material there. 
Adaptive clearing is a very powerful and efficient strategy and really only requires a few inputs. The important thing, of course, is that we leave stock behind because this is a roughing step and we're going to come back with the final contours. The next operation, horizontal, will provide a smooth mating surface. Horizontal will give us a neck mating surface and pocket looks like we have a problem there, but let's talk about parallel for a minute. So parallel is interesting. You can see that we're not just sculpting the top, but we're sculpting the bottom of those pockets. So we can go to the avoid touch surfaces interface and add those faces. And now we're skipping over that, but we're still hitting the neck pocket, which we don't really need to do. So we'll hit the avoid surfaces and we'll avoid that one too. Now we should be left, yes, with a tool path that is only going to sculpt the top of the guitar body, and that's really all we're looking for it to do. Uh, now, going back to Pocket, it uh, looks like we're only getting one of the pickups, so we'll select the profile of the second. Let's talk about that innocent-looking red arrow. So I think this gets a lot of people tripped up early on, but that arrow is essentially meant to point in or outside of the profile. Obviously, we want it in. But if you ever select a profile and find that it's selecting the wrong side, it's just toggle that arrow and you'll probably be good. The second thing I'm noticing is that I only have one pass for the pockets. And, of course, that would be incredibly aggressive. So let's change that to multiple depths. Something like a quarter inch should be fine as a depth of cut. There, that looks much healthier. We already fixed up the parallel operation. That looks good. We've got a 2D contour here for the electronics cavity uh, access hole for those components. And finally, we have a 2D contour for the overall profile of the guitar done in a sturdy half inch end mill. Let's take a look at our overall machining time. We'd expect this one to be, of course, the longer one, but let's just see how long. Hour and a half. So simulating this like we did the back side. Uh, we can kind of walk through the operations and just see if there's anything either sequentially or just bad and wrong that we can see. So the adaptive clearing looks good. Of course, pretty logical, and there's not too much we need to do to configure it, so I wouldn't expect there to be anything wrong there. And you may not be able to hear it, but my computer is actually ramping up its fans. This is not a lightweight activity. As you can probably tell, we're doing the 3D parallel sculpting now. And that's going to leave a very nice finish, I think. And we won't need to sand the top very much at all. That looks pretty good. You can see we're hitting the edge of the stock a little bit, but I think that's okay. And uh, we're going to go ahead and cut the thing out. You may have seen from the preview previously, we do have tabs in there. So the guitar body will be kept in the stock. Won't fly about and get damaged. So we'll turn back on the body, and let's take a look now at the work holding. So this is very simple. We're going to drill six holes on both the top and bottom of this piece, as well as the spoil board itself. And these, when used with dowel pins, will allow us to precisely align the stock to the spoil board and to flip it. So again, quarter inch, put some logical feed rates in there for it and spindle values. Now we can start generating the G-code for each of these programs. I'll do work holding as its own program, since I'll be running that at least three times. Select CNT router parts as the post machine. And I don't need to see this in the editor. I've learned to trust Fusion enough now. I'll change the name to something that's logical to me, maybe like solidguitar.workholding. And if it's just one tool in the program, I usually just put a dot, and then the, you know, if it's a 0.25 inch, I'll put dot 25. I'll do the same for the back side. Now you can notice I'm only selecting the setup container. I could also multi-select the operations under it if I wanted to handpick some to be part of the same program. In this case, I want them all to be there, so I'll just select the whole container. Name that solid guitar dot backside. And same thing for the front. We'll go to post process. It will remember the settings we used before. And we'll change that to a name that kind of fits our naming strategy here. Join us next time as we run this program on our Benchtop Pro CNC machine.